I could get I could rig it for you. I know how to do that. No, I just have the Tarzan model on my PC in case I need it for anything. Oh, yeah. like a, like the rig of a model. I yeah. was like, <laughs> I would use a rig to record like Tarzan does in Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> <laughs> was like, Tarzan is like brain dead in Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> That's not true. He says like ten words. <laughs> the monkeys <laughs> understand him. <laughs> and who understands the monkeys? Him. That's, that's, not a very good, that's not a great defense. The monkeys understand him. He was raised by the monkeys. That's it's not his fault. He, his parents from Frozen or Tangled or whatever throw him in the jungle. <laughs> Oh, uh, yes, the didn't, connected Disney universe. Didn't Clayton get fucking hung by his throat after Sora knocked him off of his big lizard? Did well, he, they do that? He gets hung in the, in the movie. Yep, there you go. So, oh, my God. Uh, so, naturally, that's what happens in Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> Donald and Goofy are like, Sora, I don't know about this. And Sora's like, we have to do it. It's what happens in this world. <laughs> Has anyone made <laughs> Has anyone made an edit of, of like this, the silhouette of Clayton getting hung, but with like the slow motion and the lens flare? Like when you beat a boss, you can Oh fuck! That'd be pretty good. <laughs> like level up, Aroga learned. Holy fuck! <laughs> the whole boss fight is a mini game of him like chopping vines before Layton to get to the ground first. Oh my god. Oh, uh, that's Layton. good. Clayton. Layton. Layton. <laughs> right, writing that down. <laughs> <laughs> they killed Professor Layton. <laughs> Crossing the Line is not a show intended to bully or harass anyone. Do not go out of your way to mess with the authors who write these fanfics. They make what we do possible. Thanks. Enjoy. Welcome to Crossing the Line, a fan fiction podcast where we read, review, and critique fan fiction for your listening pleasure. I'm George G. Pool, and as always, I've got my two co hosts, Elias Viva Blogs. Hello. And Stephen Blue Breed. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Yu Yu Hakashu episode where we talk about great things like Clayton getting hung. What was the first time everybody saw Yu Yu Hakashu? Oh, that's undefinable for me. I just remember seeing it on Toonami. I have no clue how old I was back then. Yeah, that's a hard one. Yeah, it was one of my first anime memories. I remember being in a friend's house and his older brother was watching Gun Toonami when I was like five. Whoa. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also watched some Gundam and then I fell asleep. Mm -hmm. Also, the first time I remember passing out watching something on TV. Whoa. I think the first time, it wasn't even like an episode. Like, I had, uh, when I was a kid, all these uh, Dragon Ball Z VHSs, and one of them had a commercial for, like, their uh, new line of uh, figures and whatnot, and one of them was Kuwabara with the sword and Yusuke. <laughs> cool. I bet it looked really cool. It was Just a really big good. plastic mesh of energy sword. Yeah. 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 A blob. I can imagine. <laughs> Uh, all the Dragon Ball figures had those for like the beam whoops as well. They're just mm. like plastic, uh, neon plastic molds. Mm. They're so funny. Oh yeah, just the energy that's like the transparent plastic. Mm -hmm. Yes, very cool. Remember when Dragon Ball toys and stuff tried to get away with like special edition versions of the action figures, and they were just like, they were just like all one color, like silver, and they yeah. didn't have any articulation or anything. Yeah. Uh, like that was so weird why did they think that would catch on why why would you want to play with this like metallic trophy version of your action figure <laughs> right it's the future it's it's chrome it's cool <laughs> hey well, speaking of dragon ball and chrome wouldn't it be wouldn't cooler's or return of cooler be cooler if that he showed his final form and not the form nobody cares about <laughs> that's your i think it'd be cool if like they took it and made it like a uh, really one of the things that I liked about uh, his form in that show was, like, how they really went in on, like, the uh, mech gore, like, all the wires and shit. Like, do that with his uh, fifth form, like, yeah. really go in on it. That'd be really cool. Yeah. But, like, and anybody that remembers Cooler does not remember his form before his final transformation mm -hmm. when he gets the horns and the cool face mask. Exactly. The second that mask goes... Whoosh, Everyone just, like, forgot what he even looked like. But then Return of Cooler, he's not in that at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's, like, half a head. Like, I get it, but mm -hmm. the other design is just way better. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, yeah. Like, artistically, I guess they were going for more of a creep factor, and his other form, like, I guess works better for that, because you can see his eyes, and they're not, like, pupilless. But, I like, guess. at the same time, too, yeah, it would have been cool to at least, like, see it, like, later on. Because they can creep you out, and then, like, in the heat of the fight, you can transform or some shit. Yeah. Return of Cooler is probably, like, my least favorite Dragon Ball movie. Mm. The writing is very... The pace is fucking nothing. (laughs) I love when the secret to beat the big robots is to just punch them even harder. (laughs) They, like, punch one of the mechs, and their hand starts to hurt. And then Piccolo punches them really hard. And they're like, guys, I got it! The new Dragon Ball movie was very good, though. I very enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to see it. Yeah, you'll see it when it comes to DVD. Or when I get a good web rip that isn't a shaky cam. That's not going to happen for a while. (laughs) Every Dragon Ball fan is going to be jumping up in their chair. (laughs) I still got to see Broly. The manga's okay. Broly's very good. Dragon Ball Super... The anime is very hit or miss, but the movies have been very good. I'm very... Like, happy with where Dragon Ball is with those. Mm, I don't know a thing about the super manga, though. Uh, Granola. Moro. <laughs> I like that Vegeta goes to the planet to train that Goku went to to learn instant transmission or whatever. I yeah. did hear that happened, yeah. Like, then I do like uh, Ultra Ego. Beerus wants to dick down Chile. We need to discuss this. <laughs> I know. Get, oh my god. Shit. He looks. He wakes up after sleeping for four months, looks her up and down, and his tail shoots up really high. <laughs> Whoa. Hell yeah. And then Whis goes, you see, Lord Beerus has a type. And he's like, <laughs> Beerus goes, all right, you guys can live here, I guess. <laughs> it's a very good movie. That's all I'll spoil about it. It's very Hell fun. Yeah. Interesting. It's a lot more character-driven than Broly. With, they're both very good on, di- on different aspects. Mm. Anyway, Yu Yu Hakusho. That show's pretty cool. The PS2 games are very funny. Do you have anything you'd like to say about it? Uh, the PS2 game's very funny. The fighting one? Yeah. I guess they're all probably <laughs> fighting ones. Uh, there's, like, one on GBA that's, like, a weird top-down, like, exploration game. Like, one of those isometric GBA games that uh, showed yeah. up everywhere and are notoriously not very good. I hate the, the camera uh, on those games suck. I hate trying to navigate in those. The Tony Hawk games are the worst. It's because <laughs> they, wa- they want so badly to be 3D because that's what was hot at the time. So, yeah. so many things. Like, you'd see the Spyro games do that. Um, like, yes. you know, Tony Hawk, a lot of them. Friggin', I remember I had an X Games that tried to do that. <laughs> I remember Spider-Man 2 on GBA had, like, three 3D segments where you would, like, run around the town and stuff, and it was really disorienting and confusing. <laughs> but it was cool, though, because it was in 3D. Hmm. Yes. Um, Who's your favorite Yu Yu Hakusho character? Which Yu Yu Hakusho waifu would you dick down? Uh, I only read the manga, and in the manga, it's just a detective story for one arc, and then it's most of a tournament arc, and then it ends abruptly. And it's like not even that. I don't know. It's not that memorable. But I read, I read it like ten years ago. But uh, it just did. It didn't stand out to me as particularly interesting. I guess it was significant at the time, or did really well at the time. Does the manga just not even have that arc with like Sensui and his? buddies that try to open the demon gate or whatever i don't think so it's just like i i know there's the stuff with the very end with like the big demon like tournament after yusuke's dad perishes mm-hmm. i know that shows up in the manga a little bit but i would totally believe if the guy that kicks energy blast like a soccer ball just doesn't show up <laughs> i guess i don't remember i just remember reading that and then hunter hunter and hunter hunter is way better and it has, really? like, it has way more intrigue and world building and all that sort of stuff with more arcs and yeah, I just like completely forgot about Yu Hakusho after I read that. Um, so I should probably read it again. It's not very long, if I remember correctly. Nah, I don't think it's that crazy. I haven't seen Hunter x Hunter. I've been it's been on my like to do list for half a decade now, if not longer. I'm sure the anime is good. Everybody likes it. Yeah, manga is great. I like the art style. And that's a huge point of entry for me. If I don't like the art style, I'm not going to be interested. <laughs> People say Greed <laughs> Island is why sucks. I don't watch real shows. <laughs> I think Greed Island is a good arc, and uh, it's underrated, and it's just a PS1 game. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, it. that's like the video game arc, right, where they yeah. have, like, spell books and shit. It's great. And if they you, have to cast spells. If you just, like, buckle down and learn the systems, it's a great arc. What about the Chimera understand? Ant arc? 
it's cool. I don't I don't know when that came out or when that was drawn, but I get the impression that it was like a revolutionary arc for Shonen. The way it was, it was, it was really good. I don't think it was that long ago. I mean, it must have been a pretty long time ago, actually, um, before a lot of modern Shonen. So I'm sure that was very influential, also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Hunter Hunter was like what bridged the gap between like the Dragon Ball Naruto era and then the My Hero Demon Slayer era. Mm-hmm. Even though it's still not over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not very readable these days. Did the Chimera Ant arc like finish? Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure the anime is still on it. I haven't like looked into it too much. I think the anime ended on it and oh, it's like coming okay. back or something. I just remember like um, you and I when we'd go to like the conventions around here. Like I guess not really around here, but enough enough of a drive to get a hotel for it. Yeah. Where like that'd be the few times where we catch cable. It's like, oh, well, let's watch some Toonami. Oh, Hunter Hunter. Oh, they're, like, in the ant arc. It was, like, the very beginning of it or something. Yeah. And then we went back, like, two years later or something, and then they were still on the Chimera ant arc. Yeah. Yeah. It's long. <laughs> it, was very, it was just very funny to see, like, oh, my God, they were here <laughs> last time we were in a hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> which is, which, that's what happens when you only get 20 minutes a week. It's true. It's true. It's just funny. I don't, I'm, I'm seeing like 2005 ish, maybe. That, like, Hunter Hunter in general or the Chimera Antarct? The Chimera Antarct. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, oh, wait. This is just an English compared to Japanese release. First mm. chapter in Japan was 1998 and then 2005 in English. Uh, I don't know. But yeah, probably 2000s or something. Mm hmm. Yeah, I always remember I wanted to, like, they would advertise Hunter Hunter in uh, the monthly Shonen Jumps, but I don't think it was ever part of the actual run, so I never got to read it. Mm-hmm. But they're like, hey, check out all these new Shonen Jumps you can go buy elsewhere. I'm like, this is, well, I'm buying the $5 book with, like, seven stories in it. Right. How dare you try to sell me on more stories. <laughs> and then One Piece skipped from Al- the end of Alabasta to Impel Down. Jesus Christ. They're like, we're going to get caught up with Japan, so here's here's a brief <laughs> summary of what happened in Skypea, Water 7, Thriller Bark, Shabbity, oh, and now Luffy's that's... fucking this woman under her coat in jail. <laughs> How do you feel about the solo Luffy arc time in the timeline? In Impel Down? In Paramount War? Uh, and Amazon Lily? I think that's some of the best One Piece, like... Like, obviously, it sucks not having the rest of the crew there, but you get to really explore his, like, dedication as well as getting to meet up with all these other characters that you've known and before. Impel Down is, like, premium One Piece because you get so many new characters and so many classic ones coming back and just joining the crew for a short while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember I reread just Impel Down a while ago because I liked it so much. It's, it's a really fun, like, setting, and there's so many stakes on the line, and it's important to the overarching plot, which is huge for me oh yeah it's also so focused which is something that doesn't happen much afterwards yeah just because like everybody kind of has to have their own moment in each arc so having just luffy and then his little vagabonds his little crews <laughs> assembled that's all that's all it is because even with like wano as great as it is the story like jumps from like eight different perspectives yep steven you didn't get to talk about uh, Yu, Yu, Yu Yu Hakusho very much. Do you have yeah. anything to say? Yeah, you can talk about Yu Yu Hakusho and then break into another topic. Uh, let's see. Your, uh, favorite character is definitely Kowabara. Just the moment he showed up in the friggin' funeral scene, I was cu- <laughs> I was sold on him. I love characters of that archetype. He was so um, sad that Yusuke died before he could kick his ass. Exactly. <laughs> Just like he cares but he doesn't want to look like he cares and i love that that's like a friggin just that whole scene in general is one of my favorite scenes from that show it's what sold me on it Mm -hmm. like immediately um as far as women goes his older sister just that that whole family line is pretty great what's her name i can't fucking remember i just told you (laughs) fuck (laughs) it's how he treats women Kuwabara's older sister. The one She's an A. She's an A. She's a Roo. She's a Roo. She's a Roo. <laughs> oh, it's that girl. Yeah, the yeah. girl with the cigarette. Yeah. I like her in the manga. She's got a less tall head. She's got a longer cigarette. <laughs> she doesn't smoke as much. 
<laughs> She's first result is like a, a GameSpot article. Oh my god! On her, her yeah, her gamer Wikipedia page. What? <laughs> what could be said? <laughs> That's a good question. Where could she possibly appear? What the hell? Like, um, she probably shows up in a Yu Yu Hakusho game, like in in a cutscene. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's oh, it's Comic Vine, which is a subsidiary of GameSpot. Comicvine.gamespot.com. Oh, okay. What do they have to say about her? Chizu Kuwabara is a 17-year-old aspiring beautician and older sister to Kazuma Kuwabara. They meant to say 18. And like her younger brother, has an extreme sensitive spirit awareness. Chizu is first introduced in the manga, giving Keiko a haircut right after she rescues Yusuke's body from his apartment fire. That's all. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> she gives a haircut. <laughs> She likes giving haircuts. <laughs> Kaiko is also here, but has no description. <laughs> oh my god! How does how does Shizu have more di- more dialogue than Keiko? It says in like the URL, love interest and childhood friend of Yusuke Urameshi, and that's it. Nose track. She goes, Yusuke, you idiot, and smacks him. And he goes, oh, Keiko, I'm sorry I looked at your ass. He goes, ow, that hurt. He looks at her ass a lot. Mm-hmm. He has to. He's the, he's the fan insert. I almost mm-hmm. said self-insert. He's the fan insert. No, no. <laughs> Speak from your heart. I don't know anything about Keiko. You'll learn. Steven, you want to get us started? I do, I do. Let's see. That's not it. Why are you looking at a picture of baby? I forget why. Why are you looking at a picture of super baby (laughs) too? I forget how that even came up. (laughs) Are you good, man? Yeah, I'm okay. You don't just look up super baby too. Something happened. I was probably scrolling through something and that happened. You were looking up the Dragon Ball GT crossovers. (laughs) And you had to you had to remember which version of baby this was. (laughs) Super baby two. (laughs) <laughs> Super Baby 2! That's right, he's in Fighters. <laughs> Super Baby 2! <laughs> I don't like Super Baby 1. He's just like weird looking Vegeta. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's just Vegeta with white hair. It is funny that that's actually Vegeta, because by the time he gets to that point, he does not look like him at all. <laughs> no. Let's see here. Far to the north of. Sarayashiki lay a forest, and at the heart of this forest sat the imposing heft of Onigumu Manor. Hmm. <laughs> like Stop that. offending our Japanese audience. <laughs> the imposing heft, I like that phrase. The forest was, whether by necessity or happenstance, dark and dreary and thoroughly unwelcoming. The manor was all these things, too, but with the additional misfortune of pronounced dilapidation. It stood for a hundred years, at least, comprising a dozen sprawling wings that had fallen to disrepair and myriad gardens that had once been lush but now were overgrown and rotted. No one was No one was precisely sure when the manor had been built. Deeds and papers in the nearest town, City Hall, likely gave an exact date, but to most of that town's residents, the manor appeared as ancient and inscrutable as the forest had shaded its crumbling roof. To them, it seemed, the house would stand as long as the forest's swaying pines stretched tall, as ineffable and inevitable as the flow of time itself. What a fucking opener, Jesus Christ. (laughs) Is this Luigi's Mansion? (laughs) <laughs> when you said like dilapidated manor, my man, I immediately remember that scene story where Cody from Total Drama fucked the lady Demetrescu. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I kept cracking up. That was so funny. He it gets really found is. like nude in the bush or something afterwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Bring him back <laughs> like, oh, Cody, the smell of McDonald's or some shit. <laughs> Yeah, fucking t- they just railed that woman. <laughs> it was and such her, a funny story. <laughs> yeah, her and her partners. Oh yeah, her daughters. Yeah, her daughters. He fucked all of them. 
<laughs> fucking tootie stick animation. Are those your daughters? Please, my partners. <laughs> those a 3D rig with this grease pencil 2D rig. Right now, they're my partners. <laughs> can, you, can you say that? Can you refer to them as that? <laughs> sure. <laughs> what? Yeah. To all catch it. Catch all term. <laughs> okay, sorry. No, oh, you're okay, you're okay. I just can't help but crack up when I think of that. <laughs> Her big pasty ass. <laughs> Delicious. This manor was, of course, deeply and distressingly haunted as fuck. <laughs> well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, allegedly haunted anyway, Koenma had told Yusuke over a videotaped mission assignment. Koenma would not say haunted as fuck. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> But you're not going there to look for ghosts. A demonic presence was recently detected in the vicinity of Onigumu Manor. And since hikers have been disappearing in that area as of late, it will come as no surprise I'm calling you in to investigate, Yusuke. Are we supposed to know what Onigumu Manor is? I don't know. Mm. I know I don't. Mm. By Yusuke, he meant and Yusuke's friends, that is. Namely, Kuwabara and Kurama who walked at Yusuke's side as they traveled the dirt road toward the house, and Hiei, who is probably off s- skulking in a tree somewhere. Is Kurama the pretty boy? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hell, if Yusuke knew, none of them had particularly wanted to come on this mission. Yusuke spent the majority of the hike to the manor grumbling about stupid toddlers with too much time on their hands, and when Kurama shushed him, Yusuke rolled his eyes. Kurama needed to chill out. <laughs> Yusuke's complaining and then complains that he's being shushed. <laughs> but when Kurama pointed ahead of them, Yusuke shut up fast. Kurama needed to chill out, sure, but when he got that serious look on his face, Yusuke knew better than to bitch. He followed the line of Kurama's finger without another grouse. And above the trees that loomed over the road, he saw the crest of a broad, dark roof. The manor rose out of the forest like a ghost ship rising from the deep, and at the sight of it, Yusuke gave a little shiver. Nearly there, huh? Kuwabara muddle. <laughs> yeah. Almost, Kurama replied, but quietly. Yusuke jammed his hands into the pockets of his jacket. Let's just get this over with. Kurama and Kuwabara nodded. Yusuke kicked a rock down the path ahead as they approached the manor. The thing loomed large, broken windows like jagged teeth and a, me- and a dark maw. Kuwabara grumbled something about the place being damn creepy, but before he could, cor- be- before he could curse out Koenma too, Kurama held up a staying hand. We aren't alone, he said in his low, soft voice. I thought he was going to say we're not allowed to talk bad about Cohen. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> He's not an idiot. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> you don't know his role in the story yet. He's got a lot of heart. It's true, it's true. I love that man. He has the perfect voice to make that noise, though. <laughs> And Yusuke followed his bright green gaze to the manor's heavy front doors. There, posed before the door knockers shaped like roaring foo dogs, five figures stood on the manor's front stoop. Five? That could be anybody. Chapter two. It could be Hey Arnold and his friends. (laughs) 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 Them approaching (laughs) Team Yusuke. Yeah, it keeps cutting back from the Harold theme to the scary Yu Yu Hakusho music. <laughs> Move it, football head! <laughs> that place is haunted. Move it, football head! <laughs> I got a sword! <laughs> That'd be so funny if Hey Arnold got cut down by a spirit sword. <laughs> right in half. <laughs> he got blasted with a shrapnel sword. <laughs> a shrapnel sword. Or a spirit fly swatter. <laughs> That's a good one. (laughs) It is. Chapter 2. The five figures are all gaijin. Or four of them (laughs) They're all gaijin? They're all gaijin goomba. (laughs) Gaijin goomba, gaijin koopa, 
<laughs> gaijin gaijin boo Ga- gaijin bones <laughs> gaijin gaijin. They're all foreigners okay they were all gaijin or four of them were at least the first was a tall guy with blonde hair, broad shoulders, and a square oh. jaw. Handsome if you're into the classic good looks type or whatever. I got it. Yusuke didn't have an opinion, but something told him Keiko would like this guy. Is Scooby-Doo not a gaijin? <laughs> is, that what, is that the implication? <laughs> uh, can, I, I can, like, <laughs> can, a dog, can a dog be a foreigner? <laughs> he doesn't know how to make the... the uh, the face, you know. <laughs> what face? I'm not going to describe it. <laughs> but you Are know you describing the Scooby-Doo would take his paws? And no! Do- he I'm does- looking it up. No! <laughs> you know the face. He does it in an episode where he wears the rice hat. <laughs> okay, look up Scooby-Doo rice hat. Scooby-Doo Asian. Let's see. No. <laughs> well, I just brought up Velma. <laughs> I could That's have... horrible. Steven's <laughs> laughing at a drawing of Shaggy with buck teeth and a big Is Chinese that real? Shirt. Yes! Of it's... course it's real. It's from the 60s. Holy shit. I didn't expect that to... Oh my god. And also Scooby's standing rabbit. on his bag. His it's bag not legs. nearly as bad as Shaggy's, I'll tell you that much right now. Yeah, why didn't they give Scooby big teeth? No, there's there's one of Scooby in like a, a, a rice hat. I'll look it's it up. It's pretty known rice hat it's not like intentionally it's just uh i mean it is but it's not a, it's not like offensive objectively but no i feel you yeah go back up that's kind of looks like it <laughs> did you search that yeah we found uh yeah there isn't anything uh oh shit Offensive. Look up Scooby Doo Chinese. On. I'll find it. <laughs> Scooby Doo offensive. No. Get back to reading. Okay. I know there's a movie where they go to Japan, and that was really funny. Remember when Garfield went to China? <laughs> I sure do. I remember they ate fucking rice, and there was a really bad look at their feet. There was a lot of things bad about that special. <laughs> Fair. It was like a whole movie. It was a four-parter. Oh, yeah. that's right. It was from the episode where um they meet the Chinese cats, the twin cats. Oh, pardon. Uh, so, like they meet the like Siamese. They're like Siamese cats, and Scooby Doo's like mocking them. <laughs> and, uh, Did you find a picture? I, no, not yet. <laughs> I'm still looking. Yeah, just just show it when you find it, and then Stephen will stop reading and burst out in laughter. That's true. He wore jeans and a white shirt, and around his neck he sported an orange ascot. He was speaking to the other people on the stoop, waving one hand in the air as he smiled brilliantly enough to blind. The group's leader, probably. He had that look about him. (laughs) Yusuke and Fred have the same haircut. They're gonna be awkward. (laughs) (laughs) They're gonna respect each other so much. (laughs) Yusuke's gonna want an ascot. (laughs) Kuwabara's gonna want an ascot. Cool boy's gonna be like, hey, I have one of those too. And they both look at each other <laughs> and then ignore him. <laughs> the skinny dude with the goatee, mop of brown hair, and baggy bell bottom pants, meanwhile, certainly wasn't leadership material. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, have you seen how he stands? Hunched over with his wrists like hanging out. <laughs> that's true, that's true. He kept glancing at the grinning foo dog door knockers and gulping, throat moving so hard Yusuke could hear it from a dozen meters away. What? He gulped so hard that Yusuke could hear it from a dozen meters away. He could hear this guy's knees knocking together too, legs trembling with fear. He didn't bother to disguise. Yusuke suspected the dude might have even fear sweated through his dark green t-shirt but he wasn't <laughs> close enough to see or s- perhaps smell for sure <laughs> he's judging them from so far away <laughs> the girl beside him meanwhile wasn't at all scared she start she stared stared up at the house with a no-nonsense smirk on her face 
one hand propped up on her jutting hip. Her purple and green dress clashed brilliantly with her bright red hair and pink tights. Not that he had any right to criticize, given his own predilection for mixing prints and colors, but somehow she managed to pull her hip-hugging outfit off. Whoa. Something... <laughs> hip-hugging? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Something told Yusuke she had dressed herself with intention, breaking fashion ground with gusto. Confidence was always sexy, Yusuke suspected, even while wearing <laughs> green and purple and pink mixed together. Suspected. <laughs> um, and that might be sexy. He's thinking about her way too fucking much. <laughs> I think he thought about Shaggy more. Mm. I couldn't find the image, so I must have Mandela affected uh, <laughs> the Chinese racism for the other one. I'll look it up eventually. Yeah, internalized racism of Scooby Doo. There was a. Steven immediately found one as bad. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd say it's worse. <laughs> I'm sure, I can, I'm sure if I pulled off a bunch of torrents of Scooby-Doo and skimmed through them, I could find something worse, but we can find What it. if it was in What's New Scooby-Doo? What's New Scooby-Doo? We're coming after you. Uh, fucking 2005 racism. The, I found the episode Stephen was looking at. It was from the 1970s. Mm. Of course. When it was okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When times were different. When times were To be simpler. fair, the people that were animating those would have been born like 30 years prior, so. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. They would have had uh, some deep-seated racism against Japan, mm-hmm. I, assure, I assure you. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And by proxy, anyone in Asia. Yeah. <laughs> Are you Chinese or Japanese? <laughs> the girl next to her was likewise confident, though in an understated way. The first school wore fashion like a weapon, but this one didn't give a crap about it at all. She wore a red miniskirt and an orange sweater, hair cut into a blunt bowl, and she gazed at the house with open and determined curiosity, like she might glare the house into giving up its secrets. Yusuke would have pegged her for a nerd, even if she <laughs> hadn't been wearing Coke bottle glasses with thick rims. Oh my god. <laughs> Yusuke doesn't hold back. Holy fuck, but her glasses definitely sealed the nerdy deal as far as her looks her looks were concerned. And then there was the fucking dog. <laughs> you stay at first thought it was like a bear or something. I thought he was gonna say like a demon. <laughs> it a was <laughs> it a was, freak. It was so big. A really big, knock-kneed, <laughs> pigeon-toed, trembling bear with knobble joints and a barrel chest and paws the size of dinner plates. <laughs> Only after squinting at it for 30 seconds did you realize it was more likely a badly... A badly bred Great Dane. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my god. And not a grizzly who <laughs> swum the Pacific and landed in Japan. The creature. <laughs> You've never heard Scooby be so ridiculed before. Novel knees. Pigeon toad. <laughs> Cause the size of dinner plates. Badly bred. <laughs> Holy shit. Well. <laughs> Shaggy's not oh. reading. <laughs> the creature slinked about the heels of the tall guy with the goatee, hunkering down to the ground as its eyes rolled up toward the house above. And if Yusuke hadn't known any better, he'd have said the terrified expression on the dog's face was damn near human looking. The, uh. the dog's hang dog expression, I get it, mirrored the skinny guys almost exactly. But what the fuck were a bunch of teenage gaijin, not to mention their, <laughs> not to mention their deformed dog, doing way all the way out here. 
And that's fair. That's such a powerful chapter too. Who Holy said shit. all this? Yusuke? Yusuke! He's thinking it. <laughs> Kuwabara is getting his mind broken by this dog. <laughs> Kuwabara. <laughs> he recognized him from Boomerang. He's really happy. <laughs> yeah. Kuwabara loves Boomerang. <laughs> hey, I love your show. <laughs> Do the thing where you, st- where you go... <laughs> Eat, eat this. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. To find out, Yusuke figured he should probably just haul off and ask, and so he did exactly that. It's not like Yusuke's the type to think things through first, after all. The fuck are a bunch of gaijin teenagers doing all the way out here? He barked, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> eyeing them over from a distance. He didn't bother to keep his voice down. This isn't, ex- <laughs> this isn't exactly a tourist trap. Karama's eyes flickered his way, <laughs> glittering and warning. Karama turned oh, on. The Scooby-Doo gang speak Japanese. Uh, or if they're just witnessing this man, you yell at them. Velma has to translate everything for them. <laughs> Karama's like, eyes. Like, what is he saying pointing at Scooby? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't want to know, Shaggy. <laughs> Uh, he's a very good dog. <laughs> <laughs> he likes the dog. Nandayo! <laughs> <laughs> Karama's eyes flickered his way, glittering with warning. Quiet. Warning. Quiet, Yusuke, he said under his breath, but it was too late. <laughs> As Scooby's one... gonna rip his throat out. <laughs> As one, the group of Gaijin's faces turned in unison towards Yusuke. <laughs> All of them turn around. Animated at once. It's like the fucking intro where they look at the screen. <laughs> With no in-betweens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the blonde leader guy had good instincts, at least protectively stepping in front of the rest of his friends with an exclamation of surprise. The pretty girl with the Technicolor outfit gasped, hand flying to her glossed lips as her eyes flew wide open. Less impressively, <laughs> the tall guy, squirrely looking motherfucker, Yusuke thought, <laughs> <laughs> nearly jumped out of his skin when he saw them standing there. Zoinks, minorities! <laughs> He did not say no, that. No, he didn't. <laughs> He's in their country! <laughs> You're the minority down here. He's a gaijin. Zoinks, gaijin! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my lord. Like foreigners! Squirrely motherfucker. When he saw them standing there, and the dog did the same, somehow appearing to get smaller as it tried to hide behind the beanpole's legs. The short girl with the glasses jumped too, but she recovered quickly enough. That guy with the glasses jumped too. (laughs) God, imagine if Scrappy-Doo was here. Oh, Lord. (laughs) Yusuke would shoot him so fast. (laughs) There's a demon over there. A similar-looking dog, but with a short humanoid body and a ginormous head. His spirit shotgun. He looked even worse, bread. <laughs> he was standing on his back legs <laughs> and gesturing with his front paws. <laughs> he clenched his fist, threatening him. Jinkies, she said, pushing her glasses up her nose with a jab of a startled finger. Who are you three? Yeah, said the blonde guy. He drew himself up and thrust out his chest, putting on the tough guy act. This is our mystery. (laughs) We're gonna solve it, not you. (laughs) Who are you people? The dog seemed to shrink in on itself, though it couldn't get get small enough to hide behind the tall dude. Oh, Raggy, it said. Well, it it said, but none of the gaijin looked even remotely shocked to hear a dog talk, and Yusuke and Kuwabara and Karama were the only ones who did double takes when the dog added, Revarumini. Ah, scary. What? We've got company. Oh. Yeah. I thought you said leave our company. <laughs> that like too. A cryptic message. <laughs> Reeve. The group of gaijin nodded. Let's beat it, Scoob, said the tall one. 
And without another word, the four teenagers and their dog hauled open the door of Onaguma Manor and just dashed inside. No, now they're running around in there. <laughs> they're going to run through a series of doors. <laughs> <laughs> For a moment, no one in Yusuke's party spoke. Yusuke swallowed. Kuwabara stared open-mouthed after the gaijin. Damn it, Yusuke, you scared him. Now they're running around in there. <laughs> Cur setting up traps <laughs> <laughs> we'll catch those ghosts <laughs> Kurama pinched the bridge of his nose with a sigh eventually Yusuke lifted a single disbelieving finger and pointed at the manor's doors did, did that dog just open its mouth and talk said <laughs> open its mouth and talk said Kuwabara yes it did Kurama confirmed it is a demon <laughs> so we're thinking that it's a demon we're looking for ah. yes we are Karam also confirmed Scooby. oh no. no there's been a demon around these parts <laughs> <laughs> it's in the shape of a malnourished dog <laughs> oh okay. he eats he eats plenty <laughs> <laughs> Like you right, Scoob? <laughs> you get enough. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are, Kurama also confirmed. Okay, said Yusuke. Good. Okay, Kurabar repeated. He nodded once, then twice. Uh, okay, good. We're in agreement then, Kurama said. A beat passed, and then, as one, the trio rushed toward the front door of Onagumo Manor. I'm gonna, Kuwabara's gonna break out his sword. I'm gonna do one more chapter. Alrighty. <laughs> Chasing the gaijin through the dusty and crumbling halls of Onagumo Manor wasn't gaijin. all that hard. <laughs> Stop calling him that. Call them the mystery ink. <laughs> Mostly because the halls were uh, dusty. Five sets of footprints, two in heeled shoes, two in tennis shoes, and one with four enormous paws. Had Shaggy come. does not wear tennis shoes. Yeah, he's got he big wears some big boots. <laughs> yeah, exactly. His giant clogs. Yeah. yeah. His clogs. <laughs> His big ol' uh... His artist interpretation of shoes. <laughs> his, cr his Crocs. Shaggy's interpretation of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> but Shaggy his... sewed together and called shoes. It's clay pots. <laughs> They're He's comfortable, molded... man. <laughs> He's molded around his feet, never to be taken off. He kicks some. If he ever kicks something in his life, it'll shatter and he'll. <laughs> Like, there's no way I'm spending $60 on shoes. There's perfectly good mud right here. <laughs> he makes the shoes from Cloudy and a Chance of Meatballs, the, like, spray-on ones. <laughs> yep. He did do that. <laughs> he dipped his shoes in the chili con carne. Have carved clear and unmistakable tracks through the dirt and debris coating the rotting floorboards, making it a total cakewalk to follow the fleeing teenagers into the depths of the house. The fact that the Gaijin weren't very smart was helpful, too. They fled in a straightforward path through the house's entry hall. Velma would not like to hear that. No. <laughs> through a bare dining room and into a long hallway lined with a, a half dozen doors on each side of its lengthy stretch. Uh, here we uh, go. <laughs> that's where Yusuke and his friends came upon them. The gaijin stood in a knot, looking frantically between the many doors in what was obviously really, really pathetic confusion. <laughs> This writer's pretty good, I have to give him that. Just pick a door already, morons. Yusuke would come to regret that sarcastic thought, though. The gaijin <laughs> turned as Yusuke and company came into the hall. They jumped comically in unison and then scattered, each bolting for an individual door that they wrenched open and dove inside. 
the dog, it should be noted, opened the door with his tail, which <laughs> curled and twisted like a monkey's tail oh, around, <laughs> around the nearest rusty doorknob, opening and shutting it with disconcerting dexterity. <laughs> he does not do that. Definitely a demon. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Disconcerning dexterity. <laughs> like a monkey's tail. <laughs> yeah, Kuwabara muttered as the door slammed shut. That ain't no dog. <laughs> <laughs> I love belittling That's Scooby. <laughs> That's Kuwabara's take on him. <laughs> it's not a dog. <laughs> That's not real. I've not seen it. <laughs> but the dog's prehensile tail was the least of their worries. No sooner the door shut behind the dog than did another door swing open. A door on the opposite side of the hall, not to mention further up the hall, and the dog came scrambling out of this door (laughs) as if the two doors connected on the other side, which was clearly impossible (laughs) since they were on opposite sides of the fucking hall and whatnot. And at first, Yusuke thought maybe this dog demon had dimension warping powers or something but soon the gaijin all came bursting out of doors that it was frankly not possible for them to burst out of (laughs) they're not even part of the chase (laughs) they're just running around through the doors (laughs) i know i failed physics class yusuke said but this is ridiculous he died also (laughs) You had to hold a chicken egg. (laughs) It's like something from a slapstick cartoon. Kuwabara looked gray about the face as he staggered backward. Kuwabara loves slapstick cartoons. (laughs) Gonna be sick. (laughs) He gaped in horror at the scene unfolding in the hallway before him. What the fuck? Kurama didn't reply. Ever the tactician intent on conducting research... And maybe getting a stomach wound in the process. Dude had weird hobbies. He reached for the nearest door. He walked through it. And he popped out of a door on the opposite <laughs> end of the hall. With a bewildered bewildered look on his face. And we thought the house of four dimensions was disorientating. Karama muttered as the girl in the orange sweater somehow followed him out the door. <laughs> exclaimed jinkies and vanished back into it. Exasperated green eyes slid to Yusuke and Kuwabar as the girl reappeared on the hall's opposite side. A little help wouldn't go amiss, you two. And so Yusuke and Kuwabara took deep breaths and tried a door for themselves. The sensation of being slapstick cartoon teleported was somehow less nauseating than Yusuke expected, but it was infinitely more annoying than he expected as he dove in (laughs) and tried to catch the stupid gaijin who were as unperturbed by the odd nature of the doors within Onigumo Manor as they had been when their deformed Great Dane had started to talk with its wackadoodle speech. (laughs) with its wackadoodle speech impediment (laughs) this case Yusuke decided was fucking weird (laughs) oh my god I gotta come back to that one this is great I need to know where that story is going (laughs) me too that's all that was amazing Scooby Doo Scooby Doo is so stupid (laughs) god I give that story a deformed dog out of ten. <laughs> I give that story four Kuwabaros going, Hey! 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 As all the people run through the doors in front of him. <laughs> I give... I give that Yusuke... I give that Yusuke fucking hating Hanna-Barbera for the rest of his life out of ten. God, Yusuke would shoot Jabberjaw on sight. <laughs> The disgusting, deformed shark. That could run on its fins. <laughs> that jabbered its jaw. And a barbara dimension. <laughs> when are we going to get that multiverse thing? The, all the Hanna Barbera cartoons coming together and just fucking each other up. I guess that's what Pibby is. True. 
So I have nothing to say, actually. I really <laughs> want Fred Flintstone in multiverses. I think it'd be a good fit. <laughs> <laughs> have you even played multiverses? I have not. I have not. Are you, are you ever gonna? I probably will at some point. It just doesn't <laughs> catch my attention right now. That's true. I'm waiting for more characters and stuff. It looks like it would run about as well as Brawlhalla, and that is to say I will not be playing it because it looks like it runs poorly. I love Nick All-Stars. Oh, yeah? If I get two frames of lag in my game, I'm upset. <laughs> <laughs> not really, but I I don't like online-only multiplayer games like that very much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, does multiverses even have, like, offline play? Oh, yeah, it does. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, local offline? Mm-hmm. Whoa, and it's free? Yep, it's free, but it's very weird. There's no shielding, like only some characters can grab. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, everyone, you know how in uh, Nick All-Stars everyone has an up tilt that, like, juggles? Mm-hmm. In this game, everyone has a down air that fucking destroys you in friggin' Spike Suit. Interesting. It's satisfying, don't get me wrong. Like, I've watched my friends play the hell out of it. Like, friggin' Iron Giant was fucking banned in tournaments, like, immediately. I hate people. <laughs> yeah. But it's okay. I they... think Michelangelo was banned in, like, the early NASB scene. Because mm-hmm. you could, like, just, like, infinitely hide under the stage. <laughs> oh, so yeah. Like... Yeah, he had the giant nair that, like, set you at a really sick angle. So, mm-hmm. like, someone beat Mewtwo King by just, like, nairing him off stage repeatedly. <laughs> Well, couldn't he do that too? Couldn't he like just like stall under the stage? Yeah, yeah. So you could like, take a stock and then just time him out. Mm. Okay, I need to read my Yu Yu Hakusho fan fiction crossover now. Okay, I'm very excited. The story is over two hundred thousand words, so I will not be reading all of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. a, lot, a lot of people really go in on the Yu Yu Hakusho. I realized it was hard to find any that were even like remotely close to our uh, general thing, mm-hmm. our limit. Okay. Dirt in my face. Hands feel scraped. It got in my mouth. A heavy wind blew by. Eh, nasty. Like a plastic bag flying into your face at a bus stop. He's spitting bars. Mm -hmm. I spit it out and look around. Knees weak. What the fuck? (laughs) What the fuck happened to Japan? Oh, Oh, no! Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. All I remember was the the dimension sphere thing that Kuwabara once fell into twice. (laughs) I remember that. (laughs) Once fell into twice. Oh, God. I remember that demon outside Saitama spin it out. I remember, yeah, I fell into it and... Kurama! I yell out. Please, for fuck's sake, man. Please be nearby or something. I don't want to trek through miles of this. Did someone nuke Saitama? I'm standing next to a burnt-out tire, half-submerged in a gray, dirty puddle. I look around. Rocks with dead weeds growing out of them. Shit, I'm on some bombed-out highway. The ramp up ahead knocked into rubble. This weird convertible wreck lying below a tall-ass shattered overpass. I turn around and... My fucking God. Rows upon rows of hollowed-out buildings. Like something from Fist of the North Star cartoons. (laughs) <laughs> whole planet looked like it died and is decomposing not even fucking Chernobyl or Baghdad could look like this oh my god you know Yusuke's usual go to Karama I yell I don't like the thought that Yusuke is in a world where Chernobyl and Baghdad happen <laughs> damn it fox boy Karama say something Yusuke I hear in the distance There, some water tower. I climb over some rusted steel railing and take a glance at a traffic sign. Huh, it's in English. (laughs) Worn out but readable. Speed limit 50. 50 kph. That doesn't look like a highway. I don't know. I don't know how I know of in Japan. In Europe. (laughs) Unless Shintaro Isishara really pulled a dick move while we were floating through that sphere (laughs) and put me in not Japan. (laughs) <laughs> Isn't that the author? Uh, Shintaro Isishara? I don't know. Yusuke! I hear again. I pulled up my blue jeans, adjust my black leather belt, and tug on my gray bo- boat shoes. I, re- 
I guess they're... I don't know. It's Yosh- Togashi Yoshihiro. So, who, I don't know who he's talking about. My boat shoes. I roll back the sleeves on my white leisure shirt, and I start jogging to that water tower. I walked around some dead trees like Chernobyl dead, going around the pile of boulders up a hill, down a hill, and there he is, Kurama, dressed in his brown slacks, black loafers, and red and white checkered collared shirt. Got his right foot tangled in the barbed wire of the fence around the water tower. <laughs> Fox boy's hanging upside down like a pinata. Oh. I jump down and ask, Tried to jump from the top? Kurama fidgets and says, I wouldn't begrudge some help right now. And to answer your question, no, I came to my senses in this position. Alrighty. Fence ain't too tall. Oh boy. Careful not to gouge the skin. There we go. He falls onto his knees and elbows and then gets back up, saying, Thank you. No problem, man. Now here's the money question. Where the fuck are we? I ask. Kurama frowns and says, If that dimension sphere is similar to Suzuki's, then I cannot answer with any degree of certainty. I recall him mentioning all those years ago in the Dark Tournament that the dimension sphere could quite literally transport us across, well, dimensions. Time and space stand irrelevant to the maneuver. So, we ended up in Kenshiro's playground. What the fuck, man? Yusuke loves to swear. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He's a bad boy. Kurama smirks and says, Perhaps. He then frowns and he realizes how fucking screwed we are if that's the case. I kind of like having certain luxuries like electricity and cable and, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Clean fucking water! I put my <laughs> hands behind my head and stretch back. Place is kind of hot. Like Yokohama in the summer. A wet, humid heat. Sky looks weird. It's a place, not a woman. Oh, I know. I know. Like, uh, it's greenish or some shit. Pale and greenish. <laughs> Kurama suddenly asks, Can you fire your spirit gun? Eh, why? Kurama says, Just try it. He got this worried look on his face. Alright, I point at the fucked up half-collapsed overpass and say, By popular request! I, I said, by popular request, my key's gone. Man, it's gone, like, just enough to breathe and move around, but, oh, we got problems. I turn to Kurama and ask, Rose Whip not working either? Seeds too? He says, if they were, I would not have required help removing my foot from the barbed wire. So we're living in some fallout crater with no demon energy, no spirit energy, no fucking nothing. <laughs> that seems about right. <laughs> oh, we got some problems, man. We start walking around the fence towards the burnt out remains of some neighborhood. Like some wildfire came through and gutted the houses from the inside out, charring the exterior walls. I'm glad Kuwabara's not here. He burns easily. Mm-hmm. This is most concerning, Kurama says. Water is also wet. Got any other breaking news? I snarl. <laughs> halt! Friendly! I hear someone behind us yell, and whoa, man. I raise my hands as Kurama takes a step back from the four-eyed guys in some blue pajamas, aiming a weird-looking pistol at us. Something tells me I shouldn't believe him. Might be the fucking gun he's pointed at us. How does it feel to be in Yusuke's shoes? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, He's very angsty. He likes to swear at things. Easy, man. We're just tourists. Guy puts his gun into some side holster and walks towards us. He's got tinted eyeglasses and high cheekbones, a long pointy Antonio Inoki chin and a crooked nose, long black hair cut just above his shoulders and chin stubble. Guy looks Asian, but not East Asian, kind of like Kazakh or one of those mixed race guys from Russia, kind of short, like a few inches taller than he eh? He flinches and turns around, drawing his gun again, his blue jumpsuit his blue jumpsuit got the numbers 101 sewed in the yellow dye on the back. The guy turns around, holsters his gun once again, and asks, Who are you? Two. <laughs> what? <laughs> the next paragraph. He got an American accent. Like the kind you hear from news anchors in the Hollywood movies. Like almost a country twang, but at the same time not quite there yet. Voice is kind of deep, frantic, pissed off. Something along those lines. I say, Yusuke Urameshi. 
Kurama takes a step forward and says, Shuchi Minamino. <laughs> he says it just like that. <laughs> I didn't expect him to say that. I like Kurama. I like Kurama like stumbling over himself trying to be serious. He's trying to make up a name. Yeah. <laughs> Screw attack machinima. <laughs> Jumpsuit guy says, Walter Joseph Kar- Karamazov. What's with the pajamas? What? Or that's you. He says, Walter Joseph Karamazov. What's with the pajamas, Walt? I ask. Walter suddenly remembers to breathe, exhales, and then says, it, it, It's a very long story. Karama speaks out. We would be be satisfied with just the highlights. Walter puts his hand on his knees, leans a bit, and then anxiously nods. He says, All right, the highlights. I live, lived, no longer live, in Vault 101. It is a fallout story. A closed community. We were raised with the belief that the outside world died in the nuclear holocaust of 2077. Wait, what? What? What the fuck? Hold on, did you just say fucking 2077? He gives us a look and says, Yeah, I thought it was a common knowledge outside the vault. Seems the Great War created more regression and collective knowledge than Eldwin Botch believed. No offense. What are you talking about? Uh, Mr. 101 is talking in tongues here. He looks at us, <laughs> gives us a raised eyebrow, and then asks, What year do you think this is? I say, 2006, right? (laughs) Well. (laughs) Oh my god. Is this an actual Fallout character? I doubt it. It sounds like an OC. (laughs) Don't know. From Vault 101. Uh, Yeah. You're the Fallout guy. I think 101 is is the main vault of the game. In which game? Fallout 3, I think. Okay. Most of my Fallout knowledge comes from Rich Alvarez. You know this. Mm hmm. At least it's not Vault 64. Disregard that I played Fallout 3. <laughs> um, yeah, it's the Fallout 3 main vault. So it's just this guy's OC in Fallout 3, I assume. Nice. Because, like, when you leave, I think you, like, kill everyone. But you're looking for your dad. You don't have to. Uh, I guess you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that the one where tunnel snakes rule? Yeah. I think so. <laughs> Yeah. You don't have to kill the tunnel snakes. You just want their jacket. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's true. Uh, what year do you think it is? 2006, right? Well, originally, so... What is it, 2077 now? 2277, 200 years after the Great War, Walter says. I turn to Kurama, and his facial expression says it all. It's as if a stray nuke flew through the dimension sphere we rode on and just smacked us in the heads. <laughs> you would be so dead. <laughs> Karama asks, Who caused the Great War? What triggered it? Walter says, From our limited history books, biased and edited, likely, Communist China triggered it by invading Alaska for the American oil reserves. America sent troops through the newly annexed state of Canada to push China out, and then sent forces into the Chinese mainland. Then, according to Mr. Botch in our books, the Chinese launched their nuclear missiles. America retaliated with their own arsenal. Though at this point, looking back at our dictatorial vault leader, I wouldn't put it past him to edit the books themselves, possibly a nationalistic slant. A theory unable to investigate now, though. There was a cult of personality in Vault 101, that bastard Alfonso Almodovar. Who's he? I ask. Oh, fuck, I don't want to read this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he started That's more weird. dumping as an OC and couldn't yeah. take it. Oh, and then fuck. Yusuke was like, tell me more. And I was like, no, no, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> something, something Chinese. Something, something. God, I, I give that a... Uh... I give that a very colorful cast of anime characters and a gray landscape. <laughs> they would stand out so much. <laughs> oh my gosh. I give that one out of 101. Fallout 3 was like peak Xbox 360, PS3 era, Unreal Engine, gray and green. 
Mm-hmm. It's 2006, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Yusuke, you're from, you're a 90s kid. <laughs> Yusuke, tell me. Yusuke says, tell me all about 2006 before we get the story started. <laughs> what happened in your 2006? Uh, I, I was in a bunk. I wasn't born yet. We were all in bunkers. Make it up. We ate roaches. <laughs> Just, hear, just give me something. Please. Kurama yearns for knowledge, even if it's not real. <laughs> I give that story 100 Vats points and Yusuke slapping this guy in the head when he hears something bad about 2006. Yusuke has to put all of his stats back in the spirit. He goes, Diddy! <laughs> Explodes his head into bloody gore. God. Vats is so funny. <laughs> you just zoom in, pick apart, you just blow their head off. I love when you like exit a dialogue because it went like bad in Vats, and then you just start like you just select their head and spam attack a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> just knock the shit out of them. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny when it's like the same club hit like four times. They like threaten you with combat in this in the frame that it goes into combat. You just press the vats button and end their existence. <laughs> uh, I love stuff like that in video games. It's such overkill. You excited for them to make a Fallout Five after Elder Scrolls Six comes out in like sixteen years? I don't think they know how to make good AAA video games anymore. Of course not. They're still <laughs> running on the same engine. <laughs> I looked at Fallout 4 and said, wow, this isn't a very good game. And then they said, don't worry, that's the formula for another 10 or 20 years. <laughs> I'm like, oh. But but what if we put it in an MMO? Would that make it better? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Do my Rich Evans face. <laughs> on the couch disassociate <laughs> as hard as I can fast forward time take as many years of my life as you need oh my god just for Fallout to be good again <laughs> alright and here we're gonna we get one more to end it off <clears throat> Jack rolled around in bed for a while planning to get a little more shut eye before morning then gave up, knowing his own insomniac ways. He shoved the blankets off roughly, having the knowledge that he wouldn't leave the warmth they had otherwise, and shivered for a moment. Getting up from the bed was the hardest part in the morning. His muscles always seemed to ache and bruises and cuts not yet healed away, courtesy of the absolutely wonderful Shaolin monks. Oh, no. He stood, then stretched, hearing his joints pop painfully, giving out a loud yawn and heading towards the bathroom to get ready for a, for the day, making sure to grab a new, clean outfit. He took a fast, cold shower. He didn't know how anyone could stand a heat being dumped on their back. He didn't know why, but he hated his back being touched or heated in any way. This is like one of my stories. <laughs> Just like waking up and <laughs> giving weird yeah. exposition. <laughs> waking up, cracking his bones, taking a weird shower. Yeah. <laughs> Then he threw on his outfit, a tight black tank top, matching tight black jeans, his totally awesome coat, socks, and boots. As he went down the steps of his second story room, towards his lair of absolute evil, he began pondering previous events, and ways he could improve his chances of winning. So deep in his thoughts, he almost missed the note left on the kitchen counter, and would have, would have if he hadn't stopped to get his usual breakfast. Chewing serenely on his nutty nut bar, he saw the little (laughs) obnoxiously bright pink colored note clashing awfully with the pearly granite and grabbed it, wondering if it was from his ignorant parents. It was not. It was. Not that he was surprised. No one got in here without security say so. No. That's what not. That's. That was not what startled him. Who is this? He? This is Jack. Jack Spicer. Yeah. Spicer. <laughs> Jack Spicer. Sorry. The I tw- tried so hard. <laughs> the e boy of the new century. <laughs> no, that was not what startled him. The message is what had done it. Dear Jackie Bear, 
your cousin Shuichi will be coming over for a while from Japan, as well as a few of his little friends. I'm not sure how long they'll be over, though. They'll come tomorrow. Please take good care of them. Love, Mom. XOXOXOXOXOXOXO. What? The nut bar's small remains drop to the ground, breaking a small <laughs> moment of silence on, with a clear, almost ringing plop. <laughs> Plop. Dramatically dropping his nutty nut bar. <laughs> his his breakfast of choice. <laughs> With that, he came out of shock and decided it would be a reasonable wish to want to bang his head on a brick wall right now. This was just like his parents, giving him only a day's warning, and then the idiots hadn't even told him how many people were coming. A resonating beeping forced him out of his annoyed thoughts. He sighed, grabbing his helipack, and left on another fruitless attempt to gain a Shengong Wu. <laughs> it is Jack Spicer. <laughs> yeah. Of course. He got bruised from the from the Shaolin Warriors. <laughs> got a bruise from this nutty nut bar. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that's supposed to be. It's like broken emojis. Oh god, it's like him doing like facial expressions, Something but like that. I can't decipher like <laughs> there's no spaces. They may as well be hieroglyphics. Honestly. Kurama sighed, waiting for his cousin to come and get them from the airport. Yusuke and Kuwabara were already getting restless, a very bad thing in an overpopulated area, and Hiei was glaring <laughs> darkly. What are they gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And Hiei was glaring darkly at the ground, still angry about having to use inferior Ningen technology. A little idiot. Or as Hiei fondly put it, metal death traps not meant to fly to get here. Why don't you walk then? He could have flown on a fucking dragon, but no, he had to take a plane. He thought, he thought back to what had led to this point. Why they had all, why they had gone all off to China. Flashy back, flashback, flashback. I guess Jack Spicer lives in China. Mm. I guess. Koenma peeked over his too big desk, a grim expression on his chubby little face, and he took a moment to examine them all individually. This mission is very important, his childlike voice <laughs> boomed on, in its own un unnatural way. Not that anyone seemed to notice. There are dangerous artifacts on the loose that could release an ancient demon and could very well lead to the end of life as we know it, being handled like toys by mere children. If anyone had suspected anything, it was most certainly not that, and silence rung in deep bells. Koenma didn't seem to notice and continued. These children are on the right side and are martial artists, but they don't even begin to understand the item's true power. If this goes on, it could mean the end of us all. <laughs> I like that this demon child is like, these guys, these Shaolin monks really should stop having these artifacts. <laughs> these kids. <laughs> these demon artifacts. They're like playing games with them and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Raymundo took the Orbo Tsunami and dunked it like a basketball. <laughs> 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 fucking cracked and then put fucking <laughs> cocking in it. The demon child watches on his TV and frowns. <laughs> Koenma Jr. Kuwabara seemed to find his voice first. So what are we gonna do about it? He asked. Koenma was quick to answer. I'm sending you all to China, where they are, of course. <laughs> oh no. Yusuke had protested for a while before giving in, and just when they were about to leave the office, Koenma gave them special translator watches, telling them it would help them with, out with the language, and also that they would be staying with Kurama's cousin. End of flashback. Hmm. Kurama is an orphan, by the way. He has human parents, so he has human cousins, by mm -hmm. extension. One of them being Jack Spicer. Hmm. It had all gone too fast, leading to this point, but that just highlighted the importance of the mission. Jack grumbled to himself, wishing he could be home making Jacko bots instead of <laughs> <laughs> wishing, he was, wishing he could be home jacking off. 
That's what I was gonna say. Is that what he calls it? <laughs> Making Jacko butts. <laughs> Making Jacko busts <laughs> instead of at the stupid filthy airport. <laughs> the sound of aircrafts were practically making his ears bleed. I, wish I was home busting my Jacko nuts. <laughs> <laughs> busting my Jacko nuts. <laughs> he tried to ignore his pessimistic thoughts in favor of thoughts about the cousin he had never met before, <laughs> but he might be. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to avoid his horny thoughts, but his mind soon wandered to thoughts. My of his cousin, cousin could look like anything. <laughs> <laughs> Even like one of my Jacko bots. I can pretend my cousin is a girl. He kind of no! looks like one. I can pretend my cousin isn't my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Let's pretend. <laughs> Holy fuck. And why he was suddenly appearing in a self proclaimed genius's life. A flash of red hair as Stark... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what the... <laughs> you look up Jack Spicer on Wikipedia, you get some black and white politician, man. <laughs> He's checking off. <laughs> Not what I wanted to see. <laughs> look up what Jack Spicer is a euphemism for. I'm sure... I'm just looking for the voice actor. <laughs> I'm sure there's an actual fucking... Like, um... What is it? What's the fucking, in, in, you know, the Encyclopedia? With, not Encyclopedia Dramatica. Fucking, what is it? Kama Sutra? No. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fucking website where you where you see the fake definitions for like lol and troll and shit. Oh, uh, oh fucking Encyclopedia Dramatica. No. no it's Urban not. Dictionary. Urban Dictionary, thank you. That's a, what? Yeah, like where you learned the definition of like troll and lol. Oh, okay. You said fake, so my thought it is, is fake. Dramatica. <laughs> no, encyclopedia dramatic is real. <laughs> yeah, the Urban Dictionary for Jack Spicer is just an actual description of him. Mm. Did you find it as voice actor? I know he was. He played that one puberty virus in Nazi and Drix. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you're overloading my brain with knowledge i don't need <laughs> <laughs> when we did the ozzy and drix episode we watched a gross episode on puberty <laughs> yeah uh okay oh, yeah, he did play that guy it's he, i mean yeah it's dan cooksey danny cooksey he's in the lorax apparently oh shit he's the stoop kid in hey arnold hell yeah let's go he's paying in kung fu panda legends of awesomeness Okay. I don't know. No other notable roles. For some reason, all the top roles are like totally irrelevant. Mm. But I see him in Jack Spicer. Good. A flash of red hair, as startling as his own, dragged at the edge of the vision, practically screaming. Look at me, look at me, we're possible relatives, snapping him from his musings. He looked at the figure, surrounded by a motley group, red hair, long and flowing, shined in the summer light, green eyes, a pasture of ice. His outfit was as emerald as his eyes, as if highlighting them, and his feminine figure. <laughs> Jack snorted loudly. <laughs> the guy looked like a Christmas. He, he didn't want... <laughs> Christmas. The guy looked like Christmas. He didn't want to believe they were related, but the hair was a dead giveaway. Before going to confront the older one, he stopped to look them over one by one. One of them had a build similar to that weird cowboy monk guy, except he was a lot taller, with orange hair and some weird hairstyle that Jack didn't recognize, but he supposed it looked alright on the tall guy. Though his outfit was pretty much just a carbon copy of the other guys, just bigger with a and a robin blue egg, or and a robin egg blue. Jack moved his eyes elsewhere. The next guy had his green black, had his green black hair slicked back, with the ungodly amounts of hair gel for sure, making Jack mentally gag. His outfit <laughs> was only different from the first in that it was a darker green. The final one was small, 
His frame slight and lithe, lithe, lithe. His black hair spiked and holding a bluish tint. And his outfit, Jack thanked God for the originality, was a black shirt and pants loose on his figure. Just like his. They're going to be best friends. He is going to teach him how to use the dragon of darkness flame. (laughs) (laughs) When Jack looked up, he realized that the other had red eyes similar to his own that that were currently locked in on his. In fact, they all seemed to be paying rapt attention to him. He gulped and decided it was about time to go introduce himself. Kuabara stared down at Kurama's little cousin, and by little, he meant about as short as he ate, if not a little shorter. (laughs) He was honestly surprised at the smaller one's appearance, not the boy's clothes that were black, a tank top and jeans, pretty tight on him, but not too much so, not by his skin was white as pearls, not by his eyes and hair a perfect matching red, that could (laughs) never be achieved if either were fake. You're a cartoon character too, Kuabara. <laughs> <laughs> Kuabara didn't pay any any of that much mind, but he he was used to unnatural stuff. But what he was surprised on were the cuts, still red and bruises, purple and black, like beacons littering his skin. They oh. worried Kuabara. What was a harmless <laughs> kid just... like this getting beat up like that for? I don't think Jack looks very harmless. He doesn't even look that young. <laughs> He smiled, trying to look welcoming, as the kid began to come towards them, looking nervous and out of place. It didn't take long for him to get across the parking lot, and once in front of them, the boy began to speak. Hello, he began in fluent Japanese. (laughs) Konnichiwa. (laughs) Konnichiwa. (laughs) Orewa Jack Spicer. (laughs) Is one of you Shuichi? He questioned. Author's note. The name needs a bit of rethinking, right? It's ca- it's called Bright Grass because Jack is bright in the head and Kurama likes plants. That's what my big sis told me to name it. So if... Oh, wait, that's the name of the story. Because Jack is slow in the head. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, that's what my big sis told me to name it. So if you have any better title ideas, tell me. Okay, hmm. some things I need to say. When it says that weird cowboy monk guy, it means clay. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. Oh, thank God. I wasn't sure who he was talking about. <laughs> the cowboy monk guy. When it talks about Jack being all beat up, it's because he falls multiple times in the show from heights of around 50 feet. <laughs> and he gets he hit a lot. So in this book, he doesn't get out unscathed. Wow. Okay, next chapter. <laughs> oh god okay moving on that was the author's note that's so funny everyone was shocked that the boy could speak their language so apparently their shocked. language <laughs> <laughs> they, everyone was shocked that the boy could use their words that the boy could speak the language that not only humans but demons speak watashi wa jack spicer des gerigamesh <laughs> So apparently shocked, they seem to fall into a silence and completely ignore the simple and easy to answer question. Jack scoffed after a few minutes of the silence. <laughs> what? Impressed by my Japanese? <laughs> Mani hanko ga? <laughs> Mani haro? So old, uh... <laughs> What? Do you guys not speak your own language or something? He half taunted with a bit of mocking twisted in for better reactions. It's like you've never heard anyone talk to you before. And if he was going to rule the world, he had to know all of the languages to make sure no one was insulting him behind his back. I don't think he has to do that. (laughs) He does. He needs to. Yusuke and Kuwabara looked vaguely irritated. I love that childish concept of the evil person who wants to take over the world has to learn every language. (laughs) So no one can backsass him. So he knows how to take over every part of the world. Hiei rolled his eyes and Kurama decided to answer the question. Yes, I'm Shuichi. It's a pleasure to meet you. And extended a friendly gesture. Jack responded looking absolutely bored. (laughs) You came here! (laughs) Yeah, whatever. (laughs) If he noticed Karama's hand, he didn't move to show it and turned away, waving for them to follow him to his vehicle. 
it as they got in, Kuwabara noticed Jack was getting in the driver's seat and was more than a little confused. <laughs> <laughs> he, hey, aren't you a little young to be driving? Jack glared at him, but it looked more like a childishly cute pout. If I can make it, then I can drive it. <laughs> I guess. Everyone was pretty confused and curious about the kid, but as the but as the mansion the boy lived in came into view, they became a bit less focused on him. And time skip. After Jack had led them to their rooms, he went downstairs to begin making dinner, having taken care of himself for since he was six had some advantages. While he was doing that, the others filtered into Kurama's room and began talking about the, they're going through the doors like Scooby Doo again. No, no. <laughs> Kurama's room and began talking about the new hosts and plans to find the artifacts. Once it's Kurama's the, room in Jack's house. It's his room now. <laughs> Once the doors were closed, Yusuke flopped down on the bed and began to speak. <laughs> Yusuke's bed. <laughs> and Yusuke, once Yusuke laid in the Yusuke's bed in Kurama's room. <laughs> Man, Kurama, your cousin is weird. And not our kind of weird either. Oh he knows your language. He can hear you talking behind your back. Behind <laughs> his back. Oh my god. He ate. <laughs> and Kuapar gave a quick nod. As if making it faster would mean not agreeing with Yusuke. Kurama looked disapprovingly at them, but reluctantly gave a nod of agreement. Did anyone notice how beat up he is? Asked Kuwabara, honestly concerned. Yusuke and Kurama nodded again, while Hiei just stood there like the question wasn't worth an answer. <laughs> Jack is like five feet away. <laughs> He's <laughs> making dinner. He can hear everything they're saying. He can't hear it over the hot pocket humming in the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> One hot pocket for me, one for him. <laughs> Six hot pockets spinning around. In the, in the one at a time. They're, sta they're stacked on top of each other so they're not getting hot at all. They're not cooking evenly. <laughs> they all have pits of lava and pits of ice. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. He's trying so hard. <laughs> Raising so yourself since six has some advantages. <laughs> Our kitchen is gonna s and some disadvantages. <laughs> Our kitchen is going to smell like shit. Why should I learn how to cook? There's hot pockets. <laughs> Every meal, they have breakfast and lunch. I'm too smart to cook. <laughs> if I eat too many hot pockets, I'll just get a lean pocket. <laughs> <laughs> There's an answer for everything. <laughs> this fucking mongrel. Do they make dessert hot pockets? Probably. I won't doubt it. The apple pie hot pocket. Get on that. <laughs> I'm sure it would be just as fine as like an as a hot pocket is to an actual pizza. Mm -hmm. McDonald's apple pie. Yeah, on exactly. Doordash. <laughs> Sogified in the microwave. Where was I? Kurama gained a bit of a worried look. Do you think he's being bullied? As he asked. Yusuke shook his head. Nah, the way he acts is too confident and too careless to be from a bullied kid. Yusuke said would, yes. I would know. I've, se I've seen quite a few. <laughs> oh, no. Kurama didn't seem reassured, but he nodded anyway. Kuwabara looked thoughtful for a minute. For a minute. Do you think that do you think that his attitude could be what's getting him bullied? <laughs> oh my I know God. if we were back home, I would have beat up anyone talking to me like that. <laughs> Jack's in the kitchen trying not to listen. <laughs> like, like knowing these guys are gonna beat him up later. Right. No one would find an appropriate answer, so he I he I shed light on a different topic. How old is he? Everyone stopped for a moment to think. <laughs> Jack tenses up, trying not to hear. <laughs> Jack tears up, cutting through. He focuses in on his hot bucket, trying to distract himself. Stares at himself in the reflection of the turntable. Beeping the buttons on the microwave to make noise. He hears guesses of 12, 13, <laughs> 10. <laughs> Yusuke took a stab at it. 
He seemed around 14 to me. And they all took in that information, and Hie continued, Isn't that too young for the Ningans to be driving or taking care of oneself? Looks of shock apprehension went around the room, and all was silent in an uncomfortable way, so they started to talk about the mission instead of Jack. Jack hoped that his cousin and friends liked chicken noodle soup and mashed potatoes <laughs> because he wasn't cooking again this evening. Absolutely a meal that this author makes. <laughs> One of the few. Chicken noodle soup and mashed potatoes. This carbs on carbs, my friend. There it is. Oh my God. He's bulking. <laughs> he is He's not. Gotta get big. <laughs> He's got to get big. He's bulking without going to the gym. <laughs> He's bulking so he can build robots to bulk for him. <laughs> now that he was done with dinner, he sent a Jacko bot to go. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> he was done. While he was waiting, while he le- while he put a hot pocket in the microwave for thirty minutes, he went off to Jacko. <laughs> <laughs> He needs to eat the hot pocket before he jacks off. He needs the energy. It wasn't, it wasn't cooked. His family is having a serious discussion about him, and he's just making a shitty, making a shitty dinner and jacking off. Jacking off in the other room while listening in. Burning food. <laughs> Oh half my listening, God. half watching, <laughs> the end time, half happened. One of his Jacko bosses is just showing Futabu. <laughs> oh my fucking lord. He sent a Jacko bot to go fetch the others in the household. <laughs> he decided that if he was going to think about them, he might as well do it now. They look and act like common thugs was the first thing that came to mind, and he almost laughed before dispelling the thought and trying to think of another. I don't even know any of their names besides Shuichi's. Okay, now he felt stupid. He looked at them, thought of a joke, laughed, and then tried to think of something else. (laughs) He's got a lot going on. He called them all in here just to laugh at them. (laughs) A bang brought him out of his thoughts with a jerk. And he ran up the stairs. (laughs) Where the noise had come from. To see what was going on. He ran up stairs after he called them all out of the living room. (laughs) When he got there, he found a pile of wrecked metal steaming from the small explosion. And the big guy with orange hair standing above it looking alarmed. Jack let out a sigh of loss for the poor Jack-O-Bot. And then glared at his cousin and his posse. Why did Kuwabara break the jackal butt? It probably awesome. scared him. <laughs> probably trying to jack him off. <laughs> <laughs> he said, what are you? <laughs> jack o <Jack-o-bot. laughs> <laughs> 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 These kids like, what's going on in there? <laughs> Nothing, don't come in! (laughs) I don't know! (laughs) Make it stop! (laughs) Don't destroy my Jackobots! He said as if talking to someone extremely slow in mind. (laughs) As their confused look, he gave another small glare and began explaining... Look, I make robots. I call this type a Jackobot. Please don't destroy any more of them. This one was just coming to tell you dinner was ready. He then called another Jackobot to clean up the metallic remains and lead the group to the dining room. <laughs> this is so stupid. We're ruining the story. I love it. Holy shit. He's a teenager, after all. I made you my special. Okay, as if Campbell's was... chicken noodle soup and mashed potato. Speaking because he knew Kuwabara was slow in his mind. <laughs> he was jacking you off. <laughs> he was here to jack you off. It's, 
It's good hosting. Whatever, you broke him. Now it's time for dinner. (laughs) At dinner, it was obvious that Karama and Jack were the only ones that knew how to use a fork. And that the others just followed their example. I'm sure they know how to use a fork. (laughs) No, they only use chopsticks. Even though they're in China. (laughs) He made Campbell's chicken noodle soup and mashed potatoes and they live in China. (laughs) <laughs> I'm sure they have it there. There's noodles. <laughs> <laughs> he microwaved noodles. Canned, imported Campbell's. They're ramen hot pockets. <laughs> uh. Just boiling soup and noodles <laughs> in a fucking dumpling. Yeah. <laughs> Campbell's dumpling pockets. Food already getting spilled on the table from poorly handled utensils. Jack got bored with the awkward silence. There had been a lot lately and broke it. <laughs> Eating soup with a fork. <laughs> <laughs> Could you all tell me your names? They all seemed to blink in surprise and then looked like they were about to start laughing from some idiocy of not remembering to do so sooner. After a few moments, one of them answered. He a the one with red eyes and who wasn't Jack said. Kazuma Kuwabara, the one with the weird though not really with this group hair. Yurameshi Yusuke, the last one. Jack blinked at the strange names, <laughs> then spoke. Do you have a short name like Jack? <laughs> I'm gonna call you Ske. Ske. Ske Bara. Bara, he, 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 well, I'm Jack, as you most likely know, and there are a few rules that you guys have to follow to have a happy stay here. You aren't allowed to destroy my of my Jackobots unless I tell you to. (laughs) He stopped to throw a look at Kuwabara here. Yusuke stifled a laugh. Two, don't go in the basement ever <laughs> that's what? just begging for cool bar to go in the basement when i go down to the basement with a jacko bot do not go into the basement <laughs> what no. i do in the basement is my business do not jack out i mean jack <laughs> go in the basement three do three please don't break any of my parents priceless items while you're here And that was the end of the list of rules. He sat there for a moment to let them absorb the information and went on to some different points. Other than that, you have free roam. There's a pool outside. There's also an arcade somewhere inside. You're free to grab snacks from the kitchen all you want, but I'll make all of us three meals in a day. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Jay. What do you think you're making for breakfast tomorrow? Uh, Eggs and toast. Hell yeah. Wait. Corn pop cereal. Yeah. Hell yeah, let's go. (laughs) Some heart healthy kicks. (laughs) Karama decided that now would be the time for question taking. Jack, I didn't notice before, but he stopped looking embarrassed. Do you wear eyeliner? (laughs) No one else had noticed either, apparently, and they all looked at Jack, who looked back at them like they were weird for noticing, then replied... No. Reapplying it every day perfectly was a hassle, so I got a tattoo to make it a bit easier. (laughs) Okay, now that was a shock. Yusuke started, actually started to look a bit worried and asked, How old are you? (laughs) Jack took a turn at being surprised and stopped to think about it for a moment. Um... I think I'm around 14. (laughs) Karama looked at him strangely. You think? Jack shrugged mildly. The last time I celebrated my birthday was when I was nine. You know when you're born though, right? You know when your birthday is. The rest of dinner was spent in painful silence, and eventually (laughs) they all dispersed to go to bed. Many thoughts on their mind. 
In the morning, Jack got up around 8 a.m., went through his morning rituals, and went down to prepare breakfast, deciding along the way that pancakes would be a good choice. Damn it, that was too easy. Damn. <laughs> he was only mildly surprised when he found Shuichi and Hiei already at the table, both sipping tea. I guess lunch is grilled cheese. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have these character moments where they eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner together. <laughs> Shrugging, he went to the cabinets in order to get the ingredients necessary for the meal, then got to work on the mixture. Just as he flipped the last pancake out of off the griddle onto a plate, Kuwabara and Yusuke came down, bickering in a half-asleep way about one thing or another. Jack put the plate of pancakes on the table, then went to get syrup and butter. After that was done, they all began to eat happily, except for Hiei, who was only ever mildly content. Soon after they had eaten, Jack wandered wandered down into the basement. A jack o oh, no. was doing the dishes, mm. and the Japanese detectives went out to begin their search for the ancient artifacts, for the poor group still did not know what they were called. Are they going to come back for lunch? <laughs> they have to. <laughs> he promised them three meals a day. That's true. <laughs> he did promise. Their tactic was to split up and comb through the area around where they had temporarily inhabited. When the time for lunch had come, Jack was nowhere to be found but warm food. Yes! Let's Anybody else go. have guesses? Steven? You're not gonna get it. I, I don't doubt it. Uh, let's see here. Probably McDonald's. I would guess like spaghetti, if not grilled cheese. McDonald's, he put on a plate and said he cooked. Steak and broccoli Whoa. was set on the table for them to eat. They ate quickly and were soon out searching again. Hmm. Time for dinner came fast. <laughs> they came back with absolutely no luck. Wait, I guess dinner again. <laughs> <laughs> I guess hamburgers and french fries. Damn it. <laughs> Ribs. Ribs. <laughs> they found Jack at the table looking a total wreck. His hair was rumpled with bits of mud making it clumpy. He can't think of another meal. His clothes ripped in random places, a black eye, new cuts, and already blue bruises littering his skin. Nonetheless, dinner, steaming roasted chicken and chopped carrots was on the table. Hmm. They just stared. They'd had injuries worse than that on a daily basis, but they fought demons. This was just a kid. Jack was so busy putting on bandages that he didn't notice them until Hiei made a rude sort of coughing noise. Hiei <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> never speaks up ever, but here he is going... <coughs> right. Jack's head shot up, red eyes wide open and alert, but when he saw it was them, he just let out a relieved sigh and smiled at them. Dinner's ready, he said humorously. No one laughed. No, Hiei and Kuwabara both gained a sort of half smiles. Kurama was the first to say, Who is injuring you? <laughs> Jack seemed to laugh more than a bit nervously, his normally stoic face turning shy and defensive. N no one's hurting me, he gave us another sort of chuckle. Um, I just, uh, tripped, yeah, downstairs. It was impossible to hide it. They looked at Jack like he was a complete idiot, which they all knew he wasn't, and wondered why he was behaving like this. Then he set a pointed look at Jack's muddy hair. The boy's eyes followed, and he looked even more nervous. Um, I tripped down some stairs. Outside? If he was that desperate, then there had to be something going on. They decided to let Jack think he had escaped suspicion, but some major stocking was in order for tomorrow. They're not going to want to see what he does in the basement. No, no. <laughs> Dinner was spent in relative peace. The group from Japan was sending each other weird looks. Jack felt like they were plotting against him or something. La 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 la, morning now, la 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 la. <laughs> When, bre when morning came, breakfast was served. <laughs> eggs and bacon along with some toast. Yes, eggs and toast. <laughs> I got it. And, and consumed, but the day did not continue as the last did. Jack, Jack went down into the basement, but the others didn't want to leave to search. Instead, they stayed and wait. Hiei was outside in one of the many trees, Kurama at the table drinking mint tea, Yusuke and Kuwabara hanging out in the vast backyard. 
a few hours later. Krama was just starting to think that his cousin wasn't going to leave at all. Really, this was his eighth cup of tea. <laughs> An alarmish type of noise suddenly crashed out from the basement, ringing in the ears shrilly. If they were your ordinary person, he would have jumped clear across the room, but he was not your average Joe, and instead ducked behind the table to watch for Jack. He watched on in slight shock as Jack hurled out of the door, a jacket, a backpack with propellers, and strange goggles added to his person, was about with about 15 Jackobots in tow. Oh. <laughs> a few moments later, after Jack popped out of the door, Kurama followed, signaling to Hiei to get Yusuke and Kuwabara, and that they were on the move. They were led far away from the current housing, up hills, through a forest or two, until they reached a clearing in one of said forests. There, Jack halted and landed, and began the search for something, the group of four watching silently from the shadows. A few minutes later, Jack had gained the frustrated edge, his searching terser, as he didn't want stop to observe areas for as long. Jack looked like he was losing all patience when something happened to drastically change his mood. Uh, author's note. Hi, so I finally updated. Yeah. Sorry it took so long, or it seemed like it took horrendously long to me, and I want to give these people that reviewed a big thanks. You guys really encouraged me to continue. Love you all. Yes. I'll try to update sooner this time, but don't get your hopes up. I'm pretty pathetic about updating. Oh, damn. Uh, well, fortunately, there's this, there's a, like four more chapters after that, but I think we're good. Okay. <laughs> I give that a really burned hot pocket out of 10. I give that a Jack not being sure exactly what his social credit score is. <laughs> I give that Jack trying not to listen to the outside world while he's jacking it. <laughs> Just <laughs> all of his guests and his manner. Towel and the door cracked to soundproof the basement. <laughs> <laughs> so no one can even see a glint of this shadow moving. <laughs> Master, are you done? <laughs> no! <laughs> go away! It's time to go fight Shaolin. No, it's not! <laughs> Bullshit! It's time when I say it's time! <laughs> I don't want it today. No, I'm, not, I'm not ready. <laughs> I've got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well that was another very exciting episode. Uh, what are we going to be doing for the next one? Uh... Did you forget you were supposed to decide? No, I have one. Let me check their stories for it. <laughs> Go I don't wanna, That's good. I don't want to uh, pick one that has no... I appreciate that you do that now. Yes. Harvest Moon. Whoa. There are characters Ooh. in that? There's farming sims. And uh, there are characters that will be farming, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> right, cool. right. I can't wait. I can't wait for every story we read to like explain game mechanics <laughs> to different characters and then just going, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh -huh. I can't wait to see Naruto learn to farm. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right, well, thanks everybody for listening to yet another exciting episode of the podcast. Tune in next time for more fun fan fiction. Make sure you're following us on all of our social medias. Steven's got his twatters going on. Uh, I've got the twatter and the twitch. If you're listening to this episode live today, the day it comes out, make sure to come by twitch.tv slash Pool tomorrow, September 10th, 2022, for a big Pool birthday party stream. It's going to be epic. Whoa. It's going to be gamer. It's going to be pogorific. Hell yeah. Whoa. And join the Discord, that too, and YouTube. Hope and I can everything. drop bits to make party noises. <laughs> yeah, I can probably set something like that up. The part, just make a hundred bits the party blower sound. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. I'll figure it out, but it'll be cool. So come check that out or whatever. If you're listening to this later, then check out this channel anyway. Yeah. Actually, make the party blower sound five bits so I can do it over and over again. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Have a good one. Have a good night. Good night. Goodbye.